in today's show. We look ahead to Monday in the NBA, what we're watching for, streaming options. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Locked On. That's PricePicks.com. The promo code is Locked On. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. All right, here we are. Ready to look at Monday. There are seven games on in the NBA. Warney. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the first game is the Celtics and your Orlando Magic. Um, some interesting developments that are going to be occurring in this game because it is the first of a back-to-back for Boston. We already know that Malcolm Brogdon is out. We know Marcus Smart is out. And Robert Williams is questionable. Now, I'm pretty skeptical that Williams is going to play. He hurt his knee on Saturday. It's the first of a back-to-back. He's going to sit one of these games, surely. And it's going to be this one. So I wouldn't get... The questionable tag is frustrating, but I don't think he's going to play. I'm pretty confident that Rob Williams is not going to play in this game. Again, I maybe they do something completely against the pattern of behavior. But I don't think he's going to play. And then, on the uh, Orlando side, the only person that's on the injury report, well, actually on the injury report, is Trimmer Okeke, because it's happening. The yokai, Jonathan Isaac, Lord Voldemort, is actually returning, according to his pastor. All right, so he's going to play. How much is he going to play? I don't know. Where is he going to fit in the rotation? I don't know. It is going to be the one of the most intriguing things to pay attention to, basically for the entire week, is where is Isaac's role? What are his minutes? Where does he play? Who does he displace? Who loses out in the rotation? Is it Mo Wagner? Is it Jalen Suggs? Is it Terrence Ross? Who is out? We will find out. On the Celtics side of things. Maximum Derek. On a healthy squad, I don't think Derek White is a 12-team league player, but they're not healthy. Smart, Brogdon, probably Rob Williams are all going to be out. The Celtics have three games in four nights. That's why the bloke's on the thumbnail, because he's probably going to get a boost in Monday's game with three players out, Tuesday's game with likely Horford out, and then another game on Thursday where other yeah, Smart still remain out. It's a great ad for at least the short term for Derek White. Now, he's been very up and down, more down than up, I would say. But there's a great opportunity to, to feed in some games here. And then I do want to watch Grant Williams, who, yeah, two games ago, played like 12 minutes on a healthy team, much like Derek White went, oh, fuck, what do we do here? Like, this is shocking. Like, we're obviously not relying on him. And then he played 34 the very next game. And he's going to have a situation where three rotation players, perhaps two starters, are out. So he's going to get good minutes. And then on Tuesday, Horford's probably going to be out. So Williams will get bigger minutes again. It's a great opportunity for both of these guys. On the Magic, of course, we do want to watch Jonathan Isaac. Where does he fit in? What do the minutes look like? How does he look out there? Um, What stats are we generating? And then the trickle-down effect is what does that do to Bol? Bol played 16 minutes last game. He had four blocks, but 16 minutes. If you're playing 16 before Isaac plays, I'm a little worried. Where does he fit in the rotation? Are they going to just eliminate Wagner and play Bol at center and Isaac at the fourth? That's possible watching their roles is going to be I almost the most important thing, maybe not, but almost the most important thing to watch over the course of the day on Monday. Talking about interesting returns, we've got the Bucks and the Pistons because it's happening. Chris Middleton's returning. He's listed probable. Yanni is also listed probable. So the Bucks might be full strength. I, I can't believe it. For the Pistons, Elf Stewart, out again. Is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. We know Marvin Bagley is out as well. Now, the last time Stewart was out, you might be tempted to go and rush to grab Nerlens Noel because he was great. But also remember that Duran was out in that game as well. 
but Jalen will play in this one. So Noel can still get backup minutes because there's really no other option unless, and this is possible, they go to Hamadou Diallo as the backup center. And they did that plenty of times. So don't rush necessarily to go and grab Nerlens Noel. He can be a streamer in a deeper league, but as I said, there is absolutely no guarantee that Nerlens Noel um, gets minutes at all or gets enough minutes to be useful. Because they will, and they did this This happened two games ago against the Knicks when Duran was out, but Stewart played. We got zero Noel minutes. Apparently he was injured in that one, but you know. He got zero minutes. Well, Diallo is back up center. So do they go to Diallo? Do they go to Noel? Do they go to Bay at center? I wouldn't be rushing to look at Noel. On the Bucks, I want to see Joe Ingles' role with Middleton and Giannis back. Of course, I want to see Milton, but I want to see how this trickled down onto Allen, onto Ingles, onto Portis, and where their value lies. For the Pistons, I do want to watch um, Passport legend Jalen Duran. He played off the bench last game. He won't in this one, I'm I'm pretty sure. He played 18 minutes last game. Like, do we just get him back to 30 straight away? Let's hope so. Um, and then I want to watch the depressed penis, Sadiq Bay, because with Stewart out, Bay will continue to start. He'll continue to get good minutes, and he'll continue to look like a solid and up- option. I don't believe he will be long-term, but the value is there at the moment, so we roll with him until that um, runs out. Wolves and Rockets. The Wolves are six and a half point favorites. Towns is out. Kevin Porter is out. Rudy Gobert is questionable, so is Torian Prince, as is Jabari Smith. So quite a few interesting injuries to deal with here. Ah, Smitty. On the Minnesota side, um, we do want to watch the Wizard of Nas, Nas Reed, because foul trouble has killed him. 15 minutes last game, 22 the game before that. Is he in danger of losing his starting center spot to Nathan Knight or Luca Garza? No. If Gobert plays, then we just see later, um, Wizard, you're out. We don't care. But if Gobert is out, then I'm still rolling with Nas. He still is a 12-team league player until Gobert is back, even though he played 15 minutes last game. I also want to watch Kyle Anderson, and I don't think Gobert playing or not playing really impacts Kyle that much. It maybe takes a rebound or so away from him, but his role is there because Towns is out, not because Gobert is out. He is a 12-team league must, of course. On the Rockets, um, I do want to watch Jalen Green because surely, surely at some point we see something, some improvement. I saw like a, a Rockets Rockets people were debating about Jalen yesterday, and someone said, "Man, if only we could have taken the generational defensive player um, to pair with our you know thriving second year offensive center to work together." And this guy goes, "No way! Why would I bother taking Mobley over Green? He can't be a twenty point per game scorer." Like, bro, have you watched Jalen Green play? Jalen Green can be a twenty point per game scorer on twenty five shots. Now that's a little bit unfair to Jalen because last game against the Hornets he went crazy, and then he was back to doing nothing. Like, lazy ball handling, lazy, de- lazy, absolutely inattentive defense. Passing is bad. He just, I don't know what he is at this point as a player. So, we saw him post-All-Star put up huge numbers. But there's this, this whole franchise smells a lot. And we talk about it, like, we're talking, and I'm talking now about the Rockets, and people talk about it like they've been just a horrifically bad franchise forever. No, it's since... Maybe it's a correlate. I don't know. Since a notoriously bad owner took over. Maybe is it related? I don't know. Maybe, possibly. Yeah, definitely. 100%. No, not 100 because I can't give you 100% guarantee. I'll tell you, it's a pretty high likelihood that since Tillman Fatita took over, the things have gone to shit in Houston. Anyway, I do want to watch Jalen Green just to see, can spark something, show me something. I want to see Tari preseason as well because with Jabari Smith out, he started and played 27 minutes and that absolutely is a 12-team league option. But there's no long-term value in that. For him to be a long-term guy, I need to see either A, Jabari Smith take all of the backup center minutes behind Shingun, of which there are about 12 a game now because he plays 38 a night. That's 10 a game, actually. Or I need to see Eason play at the three. And I've seen really none of those things happen. So that makes it very hard for me to look at Eason as anything more than a straight Jabari Smith replacement at this point, which, of course, is complete misuse of resources, which is the Houston Rockets' new tagline. That's the new hashtag for next season. Season? Season. Um, I can't speak. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is Daily Fantasy. You might have seen Daily Fantasy or heard of Daily Fantasy, 
But this isn't your traditional daily fantasy. You're not up against thousands of people. You're not trying to build a lineup with a salary cap. It's you versus player projections. You might look and see Jalen Green projected at 21 and a half points. And you go, I think he can score more than that. It will take 50 shots, but he can score more than that. Or you might see Tari preseason with a line of one and a half steals. And you go, eh, maybe today he'll go over that. So we go more. And between two to six of those individual player projections, smack them into a lineup and you can win up to 25 times your entry fee. You can do these entries in over 30 US states. You can do it in most Canadian provinces. I said Canada and someone said, no, I can't do it. Ontario, Ontario or Ontario? Anyway, the one with Toronto in it is banned from doing it. Didn't know that. But actually, I did know that. I knew there was a lot of gambling restrictions there because, you know, whatever. That's a long-winded way of saying you can do it in most places in the US and in Canada, and you can do it in under 60 seconds. It's not just the NBA, NFL, college, basketball, both men's and women, women's cricket, PGA, boxing, MMA, golf, NASCAR, and of course, disc golf. So download the PricePix app or go to pricepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code LOCKDOWN. If you deposit $100, PricePix will give you $100. If you deposit $50, PricePix will give you $50. Don't forget to enter the promo code LOCKDOWN and sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Hawks Bulls. Um, the Bulls somehow are one-point favorites. That's how you know things are going bad in Atlanta if Chicago is favored in this game. They are one-point favorites. The Bulls, Lonzo's out. Javante Green is out. And at this point, there's no other injuries listed. Bogdan Bogdanovich missed last game. That was a rest on a back-to-back, so he'll be fine for Monday is my estimation. For the Atlanta side of things, I want to see Capella versus Okongwu. We had 24-24 split last game. Capella started the last two. Does it go to 26-22 next game? We are looking towards an Okongwu drop, I would guess. But he did have a hamstring injury last game. He returned, which is always great when you return from a hamstring injury, same game. We'll see exactly what they do minute split-wise here and what it looks like for Okongwu. But Capella looks like he's taking that position back pretty clearly. John Ray Hunter is another one we want to watch. Good volume scoring from him. The minutes had been down the previous two games, which is always a worry. But with Bogdanovich out, he played 37. So if Bogdanovich plays, does he play 31? And then have you know, 14 points on 35% shooting with two rebounds? Like That's always the worry with Hunter. So let's watch what his role is. For the Bulls, Alex Caruso was able to get it done last game with defensive stats. But I don't really want to trust him playing 22 minutes a night. So what is his role? 22 minutes a night makes him a steel streamer. 29 minutes a night makes him a 12-team league player. Let's watch that. Let's also watch Pat Williams, who was very good in that game in France. But if you're going to play 31 minutes and have 15 usage, you need to be consistently bringing big defensive stats. And he doesn't do it consistently enough. He doesn't bring rebounds enough. And with DeRozan back, that opportunity for more usage is really not there. He's an interesting stream guy, especially with three games in four nights. But as a must-roster player, I don't think Pat Williams is quite there yet. We look at the Hornets and the Jazz. The Jazz are eight-point favorites in this one. We know that Ubre is out. Alinek is out. I'm going to go ahead and assume that Lamelo Ball is out. They are being, you're going to be shocked, absolutely non-transparent, totally opaque in terms of giving us injury updates. Oh, Lamelo might not sit on the bench for long during this road t- trip. Maybe he'll be back. Like, I, I don't care, guys. Just tell us. Like, who are you kidding? I don't expect Lamelo Ball to play after spraining his ankle on Wednesday. I don't expect it. He could especially on a back-to-back, a Monday, Tuesday, back-to-back. I don't expect Lamelo to play. Um, and then Cody Martin, who came back and then has been listed, you'll be shocked to know, doubtful three games in a row with knee soreness. So whether he plays or not, I don't know. On the Hornets side of things, Dennis Smith Jr., it wasn't a fantastic game, but he played 27 minutes despite having foul trouble. He had four fouls in the first 18 minutes of action, I think. And yes, he came off the bench, but it doesn't matter if you come off the bench or start if you play 27 plus minutes. And if Cody Martin is out and Lamelo is out, as I expect, then that really does give Smith value. Now, he is, has been dropped in tons of spots. I would add him. And then when Ball comes back, you drop him. Gordon Haywood, it's for free. Add him. Maybe. It might work. It might not. Has he been good this season? Of course not. Can he always get injured? Yeah. But it's for free. And they immediately throw him back into the starting lineup. They actually think he's good. So they throw him into the starting lineup and we get something out of it. Hopefully. Maybe. We'll see. For the Jazz, Walker Kessler struggled a little bit last game, but he still played only, he played 25 minutes while Vanderbilt played 18. That is the worrying sign for Jared Vanderbilt Bar, is that even when Kessler struggled, Vanderbilt didn't play. So we just watched Kessler's minutes push back up, hopefully. Also watch Colin Sexton, who played 29 minutes last game. He got the minutes over Oshai Baji, over Taylor Horton Tucker, and over Alexander Walker. 29 minutes from Sexton makes him marginally interesting when you're looking to stream in points and maybe threes. But is that of the regular role. Are we going to see 29 a night from Sexton? I'm far from convinced. 
Spurs Blazers, this is a back-to-back -back for Portland. We know Winslow's out. We know Vassell is out. McDermott is questionable. And Gary Payton, I think there's got to be some doubt. He is probable for Sunday's game, but you know, we'll see about him on Monday. For the Spurs, this guy is starting to play well, and that is Jeremy Sohan. Sohan, now! I think he's a 12-team points option for sure. He's at least a streamer in 12-team category leagues. The minutes are fine. We know there's going to be inconsistency. The minutes have been, haven't been have been the problem at all. It's always been there. The value's been there in terms of playing time. But it's getting more consistency. It's getting more usage. It's getting more efficiency, which has not always been the case for him. So let's watch a little bit of that. Also, Josh Richardson. 22 minutes, Josh Richardson. Don't care in 12-team leagues. 26, I do care. So how the Richardson and Langford minutes shake out? Is Richardson's value improved if McDermott is out? I would say yes. And if McDermott is out, then I would definitely be looking at Josh Richardson. But I don't know that at this point. The Grizzlies and the Kings. The next game we take a look at, this is the last game of the day. The Grizzlies are on a back-to-back, -back and they are one-and-a-half-point favorites here against Sacramento. Um, don't be shocked if you see a Steven Adams or a Ja Morant or someone pop up on the injury report. It's been a pretty standard pattern, especially for Morant, over the last few weeks to sit out one of the back-to-backs or at least be listed in one of the back-to-backs. So let's watch that. At this point, the only injury is Chemezi Metu, who left last game for the Kings, and we haven't had an update on his status. If he is out, well, actually, we don't. We just got an update. He's officially questioned with a leg injury. If he is out, Rashawn Holmes will just take those backup minutes. On the Kings, we saw Keegan Murray play 41 minutes last game after 37 in each of the prior two. It's good minutes. The production wasn't there, though. The previous two, it was, and he's getting better. He is, I still don't think he's blowing us away in a 12-team league. I still think there's going to be a lot of minute fluctuation. Remember, we saw these games, but last Sunday, he played 28 minutes, and the game before that, he played 20, and, like, and he sucked. So is two out of the last three games being good a turnaround? Maybe. The 41 minutes is very encouraging from Saturday, but he didn't do anything in it. I think he's okay to have in a 12-team league, but let's see if we get some form. Well, Malik Monk is completely dropping off. He was a little bit better on Saturday, playing 20 minutes, but yeah, his value is not there for 12s. Same goes with Davion Mitchell, who's only playing like 10 minutes a night at the moment, which is pretty wild to see after them. they uh, hyped him up so much as a top 10 pick last season, and now he barely plays. Shout out, Obi Toppin. Today's episode is brought to you by Fangio. The NFL playoffs are here, and we're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On, because they're the number one sports book in America Fangio. And if you're new to Fangio, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at Fangio.com slash locked on. Fangio has all of your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. I was going to go through and tell you Super Bowl odds, but at the moment, they've taken them off the board. They've taken them off the board. I can't give you that. But what you can do, there's also NFL draft odds. Bryce Young, the overwhelming favorite to go to number one. I was told that Will Levis was climbing up the board, but no. Bryce is number one. CJ Stroud is number two. We can look at all of the games. Um, conf uh, conference championship games will be up there on FanDuel as well. So make sure you go and check it out. And all of this can be done on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So football fans, don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets. Win or lose at fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. I'm always reading these ads and I go, I've read FanDuel, FanDuel. I realize that, yeah, I know in America, you don't pronounce it that way. You call it FanDuel. Duel. That sounds so stupid to me. Like, it, not stupid. Like, it just, I can't, I can't get my mouth to do it. If I say D-U-E, it's do. It's not do because do is D-O. So I read it and I hear the ads in my head and they go, FanDuel, join FanDuel. And I'm saying FanDuel and you go, Jewel, like jewelry. Like, no, it's just a weird linguistic thing. And I've screwed myself up in my head and now I'm talking about it too much. So let's talk streaming options. The back-to-back -back Monday, Tuesday, there are three teams we look at. And there are a lot of options available. It's uh, Chicago, it's Boston, and it's um, Charlotte. So we've got Derek White, Jalen McDaniels, Pat Williams, Alex Caruso, Dennis Smith, Grant Williams, Derek Jones, and Ayo Desuma. And these guys all play Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. So it's three games in four nights, low-volume days, perfect streamers. If we're just looking for Monday, we really do like Jalen McDaniels. His value is boosted if Lamelo is out and boosted if Martin is out for sure. Derek White's there. We talked about the absences with the guards. Nerlens Noel, maybe, maybe not. Like I don't, I'm, I'm iffy on that one, but I'm going to throw his name in there. Dennis Smith, Jeremy Sohan. I just spoke about those guys at decent length. Pat Williams, KJ Martin with Kevin Porter out. Yeah, look, he's a really good stream at the moment, Martin. And Joshy Richardson, especially if Dougie McDirt is out. For deeper leagues, we've got Noel, Jay Sean Tate, Eric Gordon. Um, obviously throw Tari Eason in there if Jabari Smith is out for standard leagues as well. Um, Joe Ingles, maybe depending on how he looks with Middleton back. Um, Drew Eubanks, Peyton Pritchard should get 
20 minutes, I'd say Pritchard in Boston. So there's something there. Derek Jones and Ayo Desumu. Uh, that's for your deeper leagues. And then for points leagues, we've got these guys are all available in 40% plus of leagues. Duran, Sohan, KJ Martin. Like Duran's a must roster player. I don't know what we're doing here. KJ Martin, Jalen McDaniels, DeAndre Hunter, good points league stream. Derek White, Dennis Smith, and Malik Beasley. And then lastly, we look at the chunks. We'll look at the first four days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The low volume days are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. So it's those three teams. It's Charlotte, it's Chicago, and Boston. So all these guys play three games. Jalen McDaniels, Derek White, Pat Williams, Alex Caruso, Dennis Smith, Grant Williams, and Derek Jones Jr. Three games on low volume days over the next four nights. Really strong ads to kickstart your week. And then you'll notice that there's a little two-game player that snuck himself in there. And that's the passport legend himself, Jalen Duran. So despite playing only two games over the next four days on the low volumes, like he is valuable and he should be rostered. And if we just look at the next four days in general, irrespective of volume of games played, there's a lot of players that we can add that are going to have good numbers. TJ McConnell, absolute must roster, still available in 40% plus of leagues. Trey Murphy, Ingram, I don't think he's going to be back until the weekend, but Trey Murphy, Jalen Duran, even the Bronco, Jalen Williams. Broncos country. Let's ride. Now, there's only two games this week for the Thunder. He's only got one game in the next four nights, but I actually do think he's good enough to hold on if you're in a strong enough position. And then Jalen McDaniels with three games and D-Line Wright with two games. Some good streams. And then the value guys, again, with volume is Derek White and Pat Williams playing three games over that time frame. That'll do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. And if you are here on YouTube, thumb it up and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. So yeah.